This video is going to cover the basics of the newsletter campaign in Active Demand. There are several campaign types in Active Demand. The newsletter campaign is the right choice if you're planning on sending one or more emails to a list of people. To build a new newsletter campaign, you go to Automation, Campaigns. There are these buttons here. There may be more buttons depending on your package type. The right choice here for the newsletter campaign is this one here. Just by clicking this button, you'll be able to choose the newsletter campaign. You get to create a name for this newsletter campaign and a date and time for the newsletter when it's going to be sent. There's a wizard that you that'll walk you through the basics of building your first newsletter campaign. I'm going to bypass the wizard and go directly into the campaign overview screen. This is the newsletter campaign overview screen. I'm going to walk you through the different aspects of the newsletter overview screen. The tabs across the top, here is the overview where you set your audience, create your content, uh, your content schedule, etc. The dashboard is where you'll review the results of your campaign. This is where you set up the goals for your campaign. The assets tab is where you'll set up supporting assets for your campaign. For example, landing pages, pop-ups, dynamic content, uh, etc. Depending on the type of package you have, there may be another tab here, which is your variable or variables table. I'll walk through the overview tab first. So up at the top here on the left, this is where you name the campaign. All links inside the campaign, whether they're in emails or social media or shared links from the assets tab, will have UTM source, UTM medium, UTM campaign, as you see here, all encoded. This is where you can set the UTM campaign for all of those links. This is useful for um, viewing data in Google Analytics or other third-party tools. This is where you set the send date for the first, news, the first newsletter in your uh, campaign. If you're planning on using the predictive send algorithm, uh, you can choose whether Active Demand will pick the appropriate time for the prospect to receive the email. This is based on the data collected on the individuals in the contact list uh, or the specific day. And uh, it's important to understand that uh, if we have no data on the prospect, the email, the first email will be sent on the, the date and time set here. Um, if you choose to have Active Demand predict the right time for the prospect, your campaign may be delayed for certain for certain prospects rather uh, up to 24 hours. If you let Active Demand choose the proper day for the prospect to receive the email, again your campaign may be delayed up to seven days based on again the predictive algorithm. Down here you see the promotion duration. Quite often when we're doing newsletters, we're actually trying to communicate some type of a value offer. There might be a set duration for the given initiative. You can link the promotion duration to the pop-up active state or dynamic content active state, etc. So right now, the only things that are uh, connected to the promotion duration are assets like campaign pop-ups and campaign dynamic content. Over to the right, this is where you define the campaign audience. This is the group of people that will be recipients of the one or more newsletters you're going to set in this campaign. And you can choose multiple lists uh, for your audience. Don't worry if a contact exists in multiple lists. Uh, Active Demand will only send an email to the prospect once. As well, if the co contacts inside the contact list have unsubscribed uh, from previous emails or what have you, again, do not worry. Active Demand will not send to uh, a contact that has unsubscribed. Here, speaking of unsubscribed or suppression, you can set up a suppression list. This is a group of people you do not want to get an email. There may be several contact lists in your campaign audience if there's a group of people that you do not want to get emails, you can create a suppression list. Um, every campaign typically has a set of goals and anybody that completes the goal as a result of this campaign will automatically be added to the goal completion list. Whenever you create a campaign in Active Demand, it automatically creates a goal completion list for that campaign.
Anybody that's added to the goal completion list as a result of this campaign or otherwise will become a member of the campaign audience. Active Demand has an opt-in system for tracking whether a prospect has opted in for commercial messages. And this is really for countries that have strict regulations around opting in to email communications. Um, if you're not in one of those countries that is requiring this very explicit opt-in registration, do not use this because this is really saying only send emails to people who have explicitly opted in with the active demand opt-in system. This overview box will show you how many contacts will potentially get an email. Typically, it will talk about how many people are in the suppression list, how many people are unsubscribed, et cetera. So it'll talk about the maximum number of contacts in the audience that could receive an email. Now, you could be filtering emails, as I'll show you today. Therefore, even though I have 100 contacts here, there are none in the suppression list. So the maximum would be 100. I can actually do further filtering inside the emails to further segment who's getting what email, etc. So now as you move down, what we're going to see is the campaign calendar. And the campaign calendar will show you when the specific emails will go out the door. It's important to understand that the first email in your newsletter campaign is really the start of the campaign from an email perspective. You can put in social posts before the newsletter, but if you're going to add other newsletters or other emails that are follow-up emails, they have to be later in time than this first email. So literally, I can drag and drop emails as well as social media posts, etc., onto this calendar. Now what I'm going to do is go, uh, go over to the content creation. So we have not created an email yet. And if we went through the wizard, we would see an email here. But again, I bypassed the wizard to get directly to the campaign overview screen. If I click this button here, it'll give me options to pick a template, and I'm just going to pick any template. I'll choose this one randomly, which will load up in the email editor. Now, the email editor, there's another video that talks specifically about building emails. This is where you will adjust your uh, email header information, um, and really that's a drag and drop environment where you can drag and drop content onto your email and uh, edit directly inside the email objects. Once I'm happy with my email, um, I can choose to do a split test. And basically the split test is created by clicking this button up here, which is the alternate version. And again, there's a whole video talking about split tests uh, and, or conditional send where we're sending segmented versions of the email to different groups of people. And again, this, the focus of this uh, video is not to talk about how to use the email editor as again, there's other videos that talk about that. So once I've completed my email and it's ready to go uh, there's really I can do attract send or uh, and really this requires a specific contact to send the email to because again if the email is opened active demand will track the open for that contact if it's uh, if there's link clicks again they'll be tracked if you want to send a just a generic test where it's not tracked use the test button inside the email builder. Now, once my email is configured and ready to go, I can now choose to add a follow-up email by dragging a follow-up email onto the calendar. And again, I pick a time for this. I can choose to whether or not I'm going to use predictive send for this. If I have more than one email, you will start seeing the automation steps table here. Now for the second email, what I'll want to do is uh, it is actually a filtered email. And what I mean by filtered is it automatically has set up and I'll just pick a template here. And once this template, the email editor is, is uh, loaded, you'll see there's another tab, which is the send logic. And the send logic is defaults to anybody that didn't open the last email or click a link. Uh, and again, but you can actually delete these filters and create new filters or just have it go to everybody in the list by removing the filters. Uh, 
The reason for this filtered approach is typically when you send your first email, you're going to follow up with somebody who uh, either took a specific action or did not take an action, and that's why we set up the filters here. When you create an alternate version on the second email in the newsletter campaign, your only choice is to use uh, filtered or conditional send email. So really it's prov providing different content to different segments in your list or segments can be behavioral. In other words, somebody who did this, they clicked a link, they get this one. If they didn't click a link, they get that one. That's the whole idea of this filtering system. And again, there's another video that talks about conditional send as well as uh, split testing. But again, the second and follow-up emails to the main newsletter email cannot be split tests. They have to be filtered tests. Now that I have my campaign set up, my choices are is really to, again, activate the campaign. It's important to note you cannot activate a campaign when you're in demo or trial mode. You have to have a paid account to, to send a uh, uh, activate a campaign. But once the campaign goes out, you can review your progress on the dashboard. Again, you could have set up goals, and the goal system here is really trying to look at did the people do what you wanted them to do as a result of the campaign. So if you look at the goal editor, it's uh, it's very similar to setting up goals in Google Analytics. It's really the idea being is that you have some type of signal that you're trying to track or trying to get people to do in your campaign. And you basically select that, thing, that uh, specific uh, type of goal. Maybe you want them to download a specific asset, fill out a specific form, or what have you. Name your goal, and really the idea here is, is this a conversion? Uh, a form submit is typically a conversion, but if you're looking for a URL click or something like that that isn't a conversion, you can make a choice whether or not it's reported as a conversion in the system. And this is an important one here is to understand is only allow the contact to complete this goal once. So for example, may, maybe you're trying to get somebody to click a link. If they keep, keep clicking the link, they don't keep racking up goal completions. So typically I like to click this to make sure that we only have them uh, completing the goal once. An important part of the goal setting is this piece here where you can decide whether or not uh, something a specific form is considered a goal for this campaign if it was instantiated by a campaign session. A campaign session is created when somebody clicks a link from an email that has, again, the embedded UTM source, UTM campaign, and UTM medium, etc. When they click that link and go to the website, that session is instantiated by this campaign. And if you check this box, it will sure ensure that the only people who are considered uh, completed the goal for this campaign are those people that were sent to the website or the asset as a result of a click inside this campaign. And then again, assets, uh, the idea being is we'll we could create landing pages for the specific campaign, create specific pop-ups that will override the existing pop-up groups on, uh, on the website, et cetera. For, you can link it for the promotion duration, et cetera. This concludes this video on the newsletter campaign in active demand. The entire video has been recorded with a small business marketer package. Some of the features you've seen here may or may not be available to you depending on the package type that you have subscribed to. And other features may be available as well depending on the package type that you've subscribed to.